Good afternoon. This is Justin Deaton with Eastside Free Will Baptist Church. As always, uh, we appreciate you joining us today. We hope you've had a great uh, day so far today. I hope you're having a great week this week. Of course, we've been blessed with some beautiful weather here in the Upper East Tennessee uh, over the last uh, few days. Another beautiful day out there today. Another calling for rain this evening. Still, just a beautiful day uh, to be able to get outside and, and move around. Uh, we're going to be going in today to Revelation chapter 13, and we're going to spend a little extra time. Uh, probably the next uh, three uh, sessions will be on uh, Revelation 13. There's a lot of ground to cover, and, and I'm not going to probably go quite as long as I have the last few times because there is a lot to take in on this. Uh, Revelation 13, we touched on it a little bit last week in our introduction to uh, the Antichrist. Now, uh, those of you who are with us in our study in the book of Daniel, you've already been introduced to him. Now, there has been many uh, men through the years uh, of the history of the world uh, that has been considered an antichrist or a type of antichrist. Uh, number one, or the first one that comes to mind is, of course, Antichrist Epiphanes. Uh, he was around uh, the old uh, Seleucid Empire. Uh, he was one that set up the original abomination of desolation, sacrificed pigs uh, in, in the Jewish temple, uh, slaughtered, uh, I think it was close to memory search, correct, close to 100,000 Jews. Uh, he was angry because they had revolted while he was trying to do battle uh, with the Egyptians. That's the one where the Romans met him down there, drew a circle around him, said, you better make a decision, and you better make the right one. In other words, if you try to fight the Egyptians, you're going to fight us. And Rome at that time was beginning to uh, gain power and influence throughout the world. And of course, Antichrist Epiphanes had to withdraw. Uh, he was mad and angry because of that. And when he went into uh, Israel and Jerusalem and saw that the people were revolting, uh, he killed close to 100,000 people and, and sacrificed pigs there in the Jewish temple and set himself up as the original abomination of desolation. So he would be kind of your, your first introduction to an antichrist, if you will. Uh, you can look down through history uh, you know, and I'm going to fast forward a little bit to uh, some others. I mean, Noah Hutchinson's mentions many men uh, in his commentary. Uh, you know, of course, Adolf Hitler, uh, his slaughter of, of nearly over six million Jews. Uh, of course, he's another one that uh, a lot of folks uh, believe uh, would be considered a type of Antichrist because of his ruthlessness against the Jewish people. Uh, and you, you have to look not only at him, but you've had others who have done economic policies. Uh, which people thought they may be antichrist. I got tickled when I was reading uh, uh, Hutchinson's uh, uh, commentary here. I thought this was kind of interesting here. Uh, Martin Luther, uh, you know, said that Pope Leo was the antichrist. But in 1933, 1934, of course, Noah was alive at that time. I was actually a young man. I'm going to read this to you. Some thought that President Franklin Roosevelt was the antichrist. He had a great plan to feed the world, and his NRA sign had to be on the door of every business. That's interesting. Even Congress became disturbed, and the sign was removed. And he goes on to say, my own civics teacher, this is Noah Hutchinson speaking, Hugo High School, Mr. Uh, O.S. Dongenes, had me convinced that FDR was the most evil man in the world. Being a freshman in high school, rather overt, I took a black crayon, drew a beard and glasses and horns, on a monstrous picture of the president. The problem that the problem was that the huge picture was on the front porch of my Uncle Henry, who lived on Cloudy Mountain, a food distributor to the needy for the Roosevelt administration. Uh-oh. Consequently, I barely missed a load of birdshot from a 12-gauge shotgun in the seat of my pants. Needless to say, there's been a lot of people that have, or I should say a lot of world leaders, that have... Uh, you know, being given a title of an antichrist because of some of the things they do and some of the things that they have done. Uh, personally, uh, I think you need to look at the antichrist exactly how the Bible describes him, anti-Christ. In other words, he is exact opposite of what Jesus would be. I mean, I, in our lesson last night, in our uh, Wednesday night service, we talked about King Solomon and the thing that impressed God about Solomon and the fact that he asked for wisdom is that he genuinely cared about the people. I mean, he genuinely cared about how he was going to rule the people of Israel. I mean, it really was a care for him. He wanted to make sure and do right by them. In other words, he cared for them. All right. 
we know that Jesus Christ cares for people. Uh, doesn't matter COVID uh, you know, programs, whatever you got going on in your church, uh, all those things. The, the number one objective that Christ has for any child of God, any church organization, anything at all, is to win the lost, period. Everything else is a distant second, all right? Seeking to save that which is lost. Christ is all about the people, winning the people to him, okay? He genuinely cares about people. You know that he cares about people because he came and died and gave his life for all, okay? So keeping that in mind, when you look at who Jesus is and what God cares about, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Antichrist is on the exact opposite of that, okay? He does not care about the people at all. Life does not hold meaning, or other people's lives do not hold the meaning for him, okay, that, that it does for us as Christians or the Lord himself. He, he does not care. Now, the Bible speaks about the spirit of Antichrist already being here in our world and getting worse, and I think you're seeing that. And I, I know I keep harping on Revelation chapter 9, verse 21, when it talks about the, uh, the murders, uh, the, the thefts, the sorceries. Uh, let, let me go back. There's one more there. Uh, mine went blank all of a sudden. Uh, Neither repent of they of the, of the fornication, but the murders, sorceries, fornications, nor of their thefts. Okay. The, the lack of compassion or caring for others. And we see the spirit of Antichrist in the world today. And it's really become very obvious in our nation. Uh, the the total disrespect and care for other people's life. I, I mean, I know I've said this many times before, the deaths that take place in Chicago on almost a weekly basis. I mean, it's 20 to 30 people a week. And you're talking about kids. I mean, children, babies, uh, seven, six, five years old, don't matter. And that's happening on every, about every weekend. Yet it gets no coverage uh, on our national news media. And the same thing is going on in some of these other big cities. Maybe not to the exact extent, but still people are getting killed. There's just a, a, an, an overall devaluing of life that has taken place in our nation. It's really, really getting worse and worse. And then you have such things like defund the police, which is just utterly stupid uh, to even say things like that. And, and the, the devaluing of life is just going to get worse. So the spirit of Antichrist is here. Uh, the preparation of the world to receive this individual is here as well. Now, back in the, the 1980s, and, and, and I'm going to give you some feel for things. You know, some of you that were here at Eastside during that time that may be watching this. Of course, Mayor Preacher Adams, my dad uh, as well, was a good friend of, of Brother Adams at the time. They done a lot of prophecy study together. Uh th There was a big study, and, and a lot of theologians in the 80s, uh, even Ralph Sexton, uh, Junior was, was a part of this, as well as many other uh, theologians and prophecy studiers, really started taking a hard look at Judas. Okay, uh, Judas is a interesting character, and I preached a sermon on him uh, a couple weeks ago. But he shares some similarities with the Antichrist that cannot be ignored, and we touched on this in our studies of the Book of Daniel. You, you just you cannot ignore him. You have to. And Brother Hutchinson here gives a good uh, thing. And I'm going to read some of this because it, it is it is important. I mean, it does raise the eyebrows and, and make one really step back for a minute and think about this. You know, who is the Antichrist? Now, that is the one sixty-four uh, dollar question. A lot of people like to know: Is he alive today? Is he around today? Is he close to taking power? Okay. Some interesting things about Judas. All right. And ironically enough. My father and uh, Brother Adams and all many others I know had this book that uh, Noah Hutchinson writ, wrote in 1976. It's called Countdown uh, for the Antichrist, where he talks about a lot about Judas and the similarities he had with him. Uh, first off, Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 70, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Fawcett's Bible Encyclopedia says of the scripture, and referring to Judas, that devil here does not merely mean demon. It's interesting. The Greek word also used for the evil spirit possessing a body, but devil used only of Satan himself. That's interesting. Uh, the Bible says later on that, that the devil would enter into Judas, 
and, and cause the, the, what would happen in the betrayal of Jesus Christ. The Bible also talks about the devil entering in to the Antichrist and taking possession of him. Okay. Uh, you've got to be a willing vessel for that to happen. And, and by no means am I, you know, trying to say that that uh, Judas and or the Antichrist are, are innocent of the things they're going to be doing. Absolutely not. You have to be a willing vessel. It's like I have to be a willing vessel to accept Jesus Christ as my personal savior and allow Christ to come into my heart. Uh, if you'll be here Sunday morning, I greatly encourage you to watch Sunday morning or be here Sunday morning for church service. We're going to preach along those lines. But anyways, it's like I have to welcome into my heart. The same thing goes for those uh, like the Antichrist and Judas. And letting the devil come in. You have to let him in the door. Okay. Acts 12, Acts 1, 24 and 25, we read, of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. This is the comment that's made, that he might go to his own place. Where is Judas' own place? A reference made to no other person in the Bible. Okay. You've only got heaven or hell. So Judas went to his own place, it had to be hell. And that's, of course, where the devil is from, where the devil's going. He's going to end up in hell. So another interesting similarity, something you can't ignore. Third thing he's got written here, of course, this is one I brought out many a times. While I was with them in the world, John 17 and 12, I kept them in thy name that those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. Not a son of perdition, the son of perdition. Okay? Uh, the son of perdition is only given... That title is only given to two people in the entire word of God. One is Judas. The other one is the Antichrist. So there again, something you cannot ignore. Okay. Ezekiel 21 and 25 prophetically, prophetically foretell that the betrayer of the coming Christ would be Satan. I mean, that goes back to what Jesus said in John 6 and 70. Have I not chosen you 12? One of you is a devil. Once again, the allowing of Satan to infiltrate the heart and take over. Fifth thing here he notes here in, in concerning Judas and the Antichrist, Dr. Arthur W. Pink, noted Bible expositor, said of the references to Judas in the Gospels and Psalms. These verses describe not only the base treachery of Judas towards Christ, but they also announce how he shall yet, when reincarnated in the Antichrist, betray and desert Israel. Now, you say, why would you go in to, to read about Judas? Judas, of course, hung himself and uh, died 2,000 years ago, uh, right before the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's true. However, we know that Elijah, or believe that Elijah and possibly Moses and or Enoch, I believe Moses, uh, are going to be among the two witnesses. Uh, it is one to think, is the devil got something prepared, i.e. with a type of character like Judas. Now, I, I don't think just personally that, that Judas will be reincarnated. Now, there's some that do, and that's fine. I, I mean, if you believe that, that that's, you know, that, that's your opinion and your understanding of the Bible. And, and, and I got no problem with that. that. That's fine by me. Personally, I don't. I, however, do believe that some of the mannerisms and things that that marked Judas. Now, he, we know he was all about greed and money. The Bible even talks about he was like the treasurer. He was kind of, a, a, you know, interested in things of the world. Plus, two in our message that we preached a couple of weeks ago about Judas, it's believed that he was a disciple of John the Baptist. Could he have possibly harbored hard feelings against Christ because Christ did not intervene on John the Baptist's part? Before he was executed. Okay. Very possible. I believe that Jesus' own half brothers. Judas and James. The reason why they didn't get on board with the ministry of Christ. Until after his resurrection. Was because they harbored hard feelings against him. Uh, because he did not raise their daddy from the dead. Uh, Joseph. Okay. Uh, that's just my own personal opinion. Uh, that, that, that I believe happened there. However James and Judas. Uh, Jude. Or if you know the book of Jude. Judas. Uh, did jump on board full board with the ministry of the gospel uh, after the resurrection of their half-brother Jesus, okay? So they had a change of heart after that. So in, anyways, uh, I believe the mannerisms and some of the things about Judas that the Bible talks about will kind of be prevalent in the character of the Antichrist. 
uh, money, greed, things like that. If you've been following any of my prophecy studies, you know I'm a big time uh, study or a big time uh, believer and express that I think it's not so much with armies that the Antichrist is going to conquer, that he's going to conquer with economic means. Okay. I mean, let's face it, we've seen how lack of food, uh, lack of resources, money, and so forth can really bring cities, towns, nations to their knees. And I believe the Antichrist is going to deal more on the economic scale. And I repeat once again, who wants to rule over an ash heap? I mean, uh, China has no interest in, in firing nuclear missiles at the United States. But the United States is going to retaliate. And you're going to be ruling over an ash heap should you survive. Same thing with Russia. Same thing with anybody else. Now, you have nations out there like Iran that are crazy enough to, to shoot uh, just or North Korea as well that are crazy enough to shoot a few nukes here or there, but still they're going to get obliterated. I mean, if you shoot nukes in America, I mean, one ballistic missile submarine in America could obliterate North Korea and Iran in a matter of minutes. So still those nations would be ash heaps. Now they would do some damage in our nation, but they would be ash heaps. And, and who's to say anybody's going to get involved? Nobody wants to be a part of that. China and their war with the United States yeah, they'll flex their military might, but it's more economic than it is military might. Same thing with Russia. <clears throat> They're more interested in gaining military economic might versus military might. And I think the Antichrist is going to have a big plan at it. If you look at the mannerisms and character of Judas, he was about money. Okay? The Bible tells you that. He cared about money. So the Antichrist, I think, will take on that characteristic of Judas, therefore son of perdition similarities. Now he could be reincarnated or or so forth. I don't believe that he will. Uh, for the simple fact, I don't think the devil can raise the dead. And that's how I feel about that. Now, I could be totally wrong on that, but it is interesting the similarities they are given. Uh, being son of perdition, the things I just read to you, uh, I think the similarities cannot be ignored and need to be looked at. Now, having said all that about Judas and so forth, now last week uh, in verse 1, we went ahead and touched on it. Uh, and then it says, He stood up on the sand of the sea. This is the Apostle John. I saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Now, the one thing I pressed last week is, is that this Antichrist is going to come from among the people. He is one of the people. All right. And he's going to come out from among them. Uh, and he said, Seven heads and ten horns. So if you go back to the book of Daniel and you compare that here with the book of Revelation, you'll see that's kind of a 10 government type uh, world leadership type structure. Interesting enough, I was studying some of Ironside's commentary on chapter 13. He was talking about post-World War II, about the, the, the world trying to get a federation of nations. Of course, we know that today being uh, the NATO nations, which primarily comprise a lot of the old Roman Empire nations as well as America being a part of that, which I find very interesting. Of course, later on, you'd have the Soviet Union giving its response to that with what they would have called the Soviet bloc nations. All right, now that no longer exists because Soviet Union fell. It's now just Russia. They lost a lot of those Baltic nations. They are now free independent countries. But NATO is still in existence, okay? Uh, our previous president, uh, Donald Trump, you know, he went after him a little bit. And he got, you know, and just flat told him, he said, America's fitting the the economic money bill for most of this. You guys need to pay your fair share or we're cutting the money off. And he actually made NATO start paying their own way. OK, they didn't like that. Now, the guy that's going to the office now is is capitulated and and going back to America, paying more than America should be paying, which I disagree with. But anyways, uh, you're back to that. But who's to say if if. A guy from the other party takes the presidency in 2024, he doesn't revert back to those things. That will cause hard feelings between America and the NATO nations. All right. Just, just some interesting things that have happened that, that you've got to keep eyes on. Okay. Because a lot of people believe that this 10 nation federation or, and I believe it's going to be more worldwide, not just contained to the European nations. I believe it's going to be more, a little bit more worldwide. Uh, that, uh, you know, you got to keep in. I mean, it could, the Na European nations can make up one of those groups, if you will, with the Antichrist at the head of it. You can have the Oriental nations, of course, the North American nations, uh, the African nations. Uh, you've got the Soviet Union. 
the Middle Eastern nations and so forth. Uh, as you go back through all of that, you can see that you may have 10 distinct uh, rulers over regions with the Antichrist being kind of the, the guy that's going to end up taking over it all, over all of it because of his ability to speak and, and to make peace. And that kind of goes back to the white horse, white horse rider, uh, the four horsemen that we spoke about earlier, that the Antichrist is going to be all about peace. He's going to be a good speaker and a good talker and very influential. Okay. But he comes up from among the people. So he knows the people. All right. That's important. He knows the people. He knows what the people want. Always remember, the devil knew what made Adam and Eve tick. He knew exactly what to do when he'd done his temptation of Eve. He appealed to her eyes and her senses, the pleasure part of the things that, that man looks at for pleasure, whether it's man or woman. The devil appealed to that. And he was able to get influence over them. And of course, they failed to sin. The Antichrist is going to use that same old thing. Coming from amongst the people, he knows what makes the people tick. He knows what they want. Okay? What they're passionate about. Therefore, better able to rule and, 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 and better able to get influence, I should say, and rule over them. Okay? So I think that's very, very important. He is from among the people. And he's going to have seven heads and ten horns. All right? He's going to have authority and so forth. He got, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I said ten uh, nations. Seven nation uh, type of leadership, not ten. The ten horns denote authority. Okay? You go on, it says his ten, I'm sorry, his horns had ten crowns. It was the nation. And upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. So this Antichrist is going to be a blasphemous type person. Okay? But he's going to get by with it. Now. You know, I'm just going to be brutally honest with you. There's a lot of lying going on in our national news media. And they're getting by with it. I mean, you, you watch the, uh, I didn't watch it last night, the, the president's speech, because I don't agree with the thing that he's doing. So I have no interest in watching anything he's got to say. But I did watch the guy after that, who I thought done a very good job. And, you know, it's kind of sad he's not president. <laughs> Anyways, uh, watched him. But uh, he, here's the thing. Like the Antichrist. You know, the Antichrist gaining influence and so forth, giving people what they want. But at the same time, too, he will get by with saying things that he shouldn't get by with. And we've seen that play out in our nation over the last year. I mean, people are saying things that are completely off the wall and completely stupid. And they're getting by with it. And they're not being challenged on it. They're handpicking the ones they challenge. Okay? So you've got that. When I'm trying to set this up, stay with me now. What you're doing is you're being set up to accept those things. Okay? Uh, you go back to the 80s and the 90s. We used to have sitcoms on TV that have two men living together or two women living together, even though they wouldn't say they were gay or anything like that. But they'd be on TV to get people to kind of accept those things. Now, we've got gay marriages legal. Okay? Now, polygamy is the next thing coming down. You've got television shows which are showing these lifestyles and these guys actively looking for more than one wife. I'm mean, actively doing that and gaining that. And what it is doing is getting people to see or trying to get people to, 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 to see that hey, it's okay. There's no problem with this. It's all right. And the next thing you know, they, they just kind of learn to live with it. It gets accepted. And the next thing you know, it's legal. Okay. And that's what's happening in the, in the, in the United States and the news media right now. They're just blatantly telling falsifications, and they know it's false, and they're not being challenged on it. Politicians are getting more and more by with telling things that are not true, are not factual. Okay, you can run the numbers. You can sit with your phone and run your phone and fact check a politician yourself while they're speaking on TV and find out about half of what, about half of what they say is not true. Okay, I'm just being honest with you. So... The Antichrist, the world is being, remember now, spirit of Antichrist, okay? The world is being set up for those things. And as you see here, he's going to have upon his head the name of blasphemy. He's going to get by with those falsifications and those lies and, and blaspheming and so forth because the world's going to be accepting to it. Plus, the caveat you got to keep in mind is the born-again Christians are gone. In other words, the, the church is gone, okay? You still have some Christians here. But by and large, the influence of the church is gone. So he's going to get by with it even more. So you're seeing some things here with the Antichrist 
you know, the foundation is being laid for those things right now. Today, it is being laid for those things. Okay. So this man comes from amongst the people. He's going to be a very good speaker. He's at first, he's not going to be over the, the, the world, but he's going to be a part of a, I think he's going to have a command of a region more than likely the European Union uh, that will command one of the, the 10 regions, but he will be over that. But everybody will look at him and say, one day that guy is going to be the leader. Okay. And I think he's going to come out of nowhere. I think he's going to rise to power very rapidly. Uh, I know we, we think to ourselves, you know, you look at the current president. I mean, he's been in politics for over 40 years and just now made president. Uh, the Antichrist ain't going to be that way. And before you think that's not possible, look at the past two presidents in the United States. As I've said many times before, Barack Obama and Donald Trump, neither one of those guys are the Antichrist. But if you ask the average Democrat in 2008, in the spring of 2008, who Barack Obama is, they wouldn't have any clue. Six months later, he became president of the United States. Donald Trump, even though people would know who Donald Trump is, they say Donald Trump, the entertainer or the apprentice, if you will, or being on this show or that show. Six months later, he became president. OK, the Antichrist, I think, is going to be that fast and that quickly. And the next verse, I think, belays that the beast, which I saw, which I saw was like to a leopard. A leopard denotes speed and agility, craftiness. A leopard is not known for overpowering uh, large prey, but it is known for using speed, agility, and craftiness to overcome it. Okay? And that's what the Antichrist is going to do. Alexander the Great, if you go back to the four beasts of Daniel, Alexander the Great and the Greek, uh, 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 Greek uh, city-states, uh, Greek empire, was referred to as a leopard that had all the wings because of the speed at which they conquered. I think the Antichrist will very quickly arrive on the scene and very quickly gain power at a very rapid pace that will surprise a lot of people. I mean, one minute you've never heard of him. A few weeks later, he's all of a sudden ruling a region. Okay. His feet were as the feet of a bear. Now, a bear is something that's got large feet, large claws on it. And a bear's feet, if you ever watched a bear, he likes to grab things and pull them to him. Okay. So you're seeing like a, a power grab. A grabbing uh, motion, a grabbing as much as he can. And a bear will gain as much as he can. A bear's paws are huge. You go back to the Medes and the Persian Empire, Darius's empire, it was huge and monstrous. That's why they referred to it as a bear on one side because it, it gained so quickly it became a large lumbering bear. All right. The Antichrist will also typify that. He will be quick in speed, but also like a bear, gain large portions of power right off the bat. I go back to what I said a few moments ago. Even though he may not be the chief ruler at first, he will rule one of those regions of the 10. And the other guys will look at him and say, one day that guy's going to be the man. OK, and that gets us into the mouth as the mouth of a lion. A lion is known for his roar and everybody hears him. I always remember watching those uh, things on the animal planet. Uh, you'd hear the lion roar if you didn't hear anything else. That's the, he announces to everybody that he's here, he's known and he's on the move. OK, the Antichrist will be that way. He'll have a large audience, a mouth, great influence. You go back to Adolf Hitler, very influential. Uh, the thing with Adolf Hitler, the reason why his influence wasn't even more far reaching is because TV and the ability of satellite TV or our cell phones and so forth are not what they are today. In other words, Hitler primarily was very influential within the German people. Imagine a guy like Hitler with his ability of influence and speaking with today's modern technology. I'm telling you, he'd have more than the German people following him. Okay, uh, that's the Antichrist. Uh, even though Hitler is not the Antichrist, I don't believe he's going to be reincarnated or anything like that. Once again, he is one of those that has shown what the Antichrist can do. And I think the Bible tells us about that. There will be many Antichrists that come, many that will be precursors. You think about John the Baptist. Who, who was the one who announced the, the arrival of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think these many antichrists that we've seen throughout history, uh, whether it's Antichrist Epiphanes, uh, Adolf Hitler, uh, some of the others, Mohammed, some of these others out there. I think the things they have done and the influence they have shown is what the antichrist is going to do. But the antichrist has the technology today.
to reach everybody. I mean, here I am on Facebook. People in India can watch my show. Okay, people in far reaches of the world can watch this. All right, the Antichrist will have a worldwide audience. It will not just be a particular region, a particular country, an area, so forth. Worldwide, everybody's going to know what he has to say. Okay, so that technology is in place, and the Bible says here, and it kind of goes back to to Judas and, and, and the son of perdition, and the dragon gave him his power. Now, the person has to be a willing vessel to be saved. You have to be willing to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I can preach to them blue in the face and tell you all the things about the gospel and express them to you. I have tears in my eyes pleading with you to come to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. But at the end of the day, it's still up to you. You've got to make that decision. The same thing goes here with this Antichrist. He had to be willing to accept what the devil was wanting to give him. And I believe he has been. Okay. And, and the Bible tells us that the dragon, that's the devil, gives him his power and ability. In other words, the ability of influence. He's learning from the best. The, the ability of how to gain power quickly. Once again, he's learning from the best. Not only to gain power quickly, but large swaths of it, like the bear, can do that at a rapid pace. The devil knows how to do that. He does that in people's lives every single day. Okay? And he's given the Antichrist his power. And also his seat. His seat at this table, this federation of, of nations or regions, the Antichrist will have a seat at it. Now, the, the question I get asked here a lot here lately, when are we going to get to that point? Okay? Uh, we are getting there. Are, are you watching TV? I mean, look at the crisis on our southern border right now and the unwillingness of the current president to do anything about it. I mean, I must be honest with you, not being political, being honest. Last night in his speech, even though I didn't watch it, I've watched enough people talk about it. He talked less than three minutes about a crisis he caused himself at the southern border. Less than three minutes. A member of his own party who serves the people of Arizona called him out on it. Very aggravated with him. OK, see, you're living in a nation or in a world right now that does not want to recognize borders. OK. And I, I remember watching the, I watched a TV show here. Me and the boys did. Uh, matter of fact, from the, 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 the Marvel films that have been very uh, worldwide and very influential about superheroes and so forth. And, and one of those things that they had had on uh, one of the channels, it was a series. Now, these people were being one world, one people. Yeah, and they were considered to be terrorists, but towards the end of the show, maybe they were not terrorists. In other words, once again, being conditioned to accept these things. Okay, I'm telling you, we are headed in that direction. We're going to get there eventually, if not quicker than you think. And as we see these things, his seat, the Antichrist will have a seat at that table. Now, could it happen? Yeah, it could happen at any time. I mean, you look at world leaders right now and what's going on and what's taking place. And, and you look at the pandemic and how the pandemic's been dealt with and, and so forth. You look at China over there and the Asiatic nations. China would love to be the one in control or at least their leader be in control of the Asiatic nations. You look at uh, Vladimir Putin. He would love to have control over the Baltic and, and Siberian and type northern nations, if you will. You look at the European Union. They would love to have a man, and, and Brother Ralph brought this out in his own uh, preaching a few years back. They want somebody to rule the European nations, be he God or devil, they famously said. Uh, the Middle Eastern nations, the same way. They'd like to have somebody rise up in the Middle Eastern nations and take a bull by the horns and bring peace there. Uh, India would be another region to watch, uh, if you will, uh, in, in those areas as well. Uh, you look at Australia, you look at the African nations. Uh, they would love to have somebody rise up in the African nations and, and be somebody who could really take care and rule those nations and, and help them come together, if you will, as one continent. The North American, uh, you know, America, Canada and, and South America, I believe they will stay distinct nations per se. OK, but uh, look what America has divulged into in just the last few months. 
Canada the same way. South America would love to have a South America type nations instead of being split up into the Brazil and so forth that they are today. Okay. We're heading in that direction. And we may get there more rapidly than you think. But here the Bible tells you that the devil will give the Antichrist a seat at that table. I think it's going to be the European nations. Also, you see great authority. Once again, this goes back to what I'm saying. He'll be at that seat with the other ten. The other nine there will be looking at him saying, all right, one day he's going to be ruling this whole thing because he's got it going on between his ears. In other words, we're picking him out. Okay, eventually he's going to be our world ruler. All right. So the devil is going to give him all these things, the power, the seat, and the authority. But he has to be willing to take them. Okay? So you can't blame the old adage of, you know, the devil made me do it. No, no, no. You have to be willing to open up your heart, your mind, and yourself to Satan to gain these things. And this person will do that. Okay? I go back to Judas where I think the, 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 the similarities with Judas go back to, son of perdition. Judas was about money. He had already opened himself up. He, he wanted money. He wanted things. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. We've been studying this on Sunday night. And I believe Judas opened himself up for the devil to come in. I think the Antichrist is going to do the same thing. This person that's going to be the Antichrist is going to do the same thing. So he has all this power and authority as a seat at the table, the Bible is telling you. He says in verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. All right, this is this is where things get very, very interesting. Okay, I want to point a couple of things out to you, and I've done some some study and history on this. Surprisingly, in the last seventy years, there's been two American presidents which have a, are that are very similar. You're going to be shocked when I tell you this. They're very similar in their economic policies. They are very similar in what they believed about military action and so forth. They were just very similar in what, how they understood and, and believed how America as a society and as an economic power should operate. Two of them were very similar. Now comes the shocking part. The two that were very similar, JFK, Democrat, Ronald Reagan, Republican. Go look it up yourself. Okay? They were very similar. They believed that people need to be empowered, if you will. In other words, less government, but be empowered to do what they want to do, all right? Financially, so forth, make their own decisions. In other words, live the American dream. JFK, Ronald Reagan were big-time believers in that, all right? Cut taxes, put the power with the people, and let the people make their own decisions how best to spend their money or their wealth or gain wealth, okay? Both of them, extremely similar, okay? Here's the other part about that. Unfortunately, JFK was assassinated. In other words, an, an attempted assassination was made on him, and unfortunately, it was successful. Everybody remembers that. He was assassinated in, in, in Dallas, Texas, I believe, in 1963. Okay, very, very sad uh, thing. I wasn't alive at that time, but I've seen the picture. I remember seeing that. Of course, his son, uh, tragically, you know, had to be raised without his father as well as his daughter. It's just a very sad, tragic situation. Ronald Reagan, on the other hand, also received an assassination attempt, okay? Now, he lived. If you recall, it happened when he was going out. He was shot. One of his Secret Service guys actually took a bullet, one of the bullets for him, and was able to save his life. And they were able to get him to the hospital. He had surgery. And, of course, he recovered from that. So it's very interesting that you got two American presidents who were very similar different parties, but very, very similar in what they believed America should be and how it should be governed, all right? That's where the term Reagan Democrats come from. Yeah, they were the guys that, that really believed in JFK's vision of America. And when Reagan had the same vision, they jumped ship and went to uh, Ronald Reagan and voted for him. That's where the term Reagan Democrats came from, all right? I know because my family's full of Reagan Democrats, okay? So that's where that came from. So that's very interesting. It's, it's something that you, 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 you just put in the back of your mind. And then you look at the Antichrist. All right. I go back to what I said a few moments ago about influence and being a, from amongst the people. 
The Antichrist is going to try to give the people what the people want. Or he's going to appear to do that. Okay? Uh, their passions and so forth. Sinful or not, he's going to give them those things. Okay? Now, the Bible says that he, and a lot of theologians believe that he himself, the Antichrist, will receive a deadly wound. An assassination attempt. Okay? That will be somewhat successful. All right? In other words, uh, you know, the Bible says, as it were, wounded to death. He's going to have either a near-death experience or so forth, or somebody's going to make an attempt on him that cost him his life. But the Bible is also going to say there that his deadly wound was healed. Okay? Remember, the, the devil is a master at influence and is also a master, and I'm trying to think of an old magician's term, sleight of hand. Okay? And, and the, whoever this Antichrist is, the fact he's able to heal from this deadly wound. I know you got modern medicine today. Completely understand that. But I'm just going by what the Bible says here. Uh, he's going to receive a wound that should have killed him. But he's miraculously going to survive. Okay? The Bible says all the world wondered after the beast. All right? Go back to what we're saying here and stay with us. His seat at the table, the devil's giving him. The rest of the world leaders look at him and say, okay, he's eventually going to be ruling this thing. And evidently, he's giving people what they want and so forth and doing things for people. You know, on the on the appearance of that, to gain more influence, okay? Always remember, Satan wants to gain influence. The more influence I can gain over you, the more power I will wield over you, okay? So he gains the influence. All of a sudden, somebody takes a shot at it. I mean, when you're dealing with a sinful world and a world full of sinful people, I don't believe a Christian would do that. I don't think one of the, the 144,000 converts would do that. That goes contrary that the one a Christian believes, and no, that, that's not going to happen. Now, the Antichrist may frame it that way, but I do not believe a Christian will do this. I believe one of these sinful people, uh, when you take the Holy Spirit, the church has been raptured out when this takes place, uh, the Holy Spirit of God is gone. Uh, you've got a lot of sinfulness going on in this world. As the Bible says, they won't even repent of it after three and a half years after many of the judgments of God have fallen. So you've got a very sinful world you're in. So it, it, it does not, you know, surprise me at all that one of these very sinful people that the Antichrist has given all this to is going to take advantage of that and try to kill him. Okay? Now, that's just the nature of man, the sinful nature of man, unchecked when it's left that way. So they do this, and then he survives. And all the world now, if you didn't think he was going to be the next in line before, he is now. Now all the people are going to rally behind him. I mean, think about some of the things that have happened. I mean, look at Ronald Reagan. Uh, when the assassination attempt failed on him, and he was able to recover in the hospital, he was able to wield a lot of power, a lot more power with a Democrat Congress than what he had before the assassination attempt. Okay? So the same thing with the Antichrist here. I mean, he had power to begin with. Now that power is multiplying because the world now is wondering after him. Hey, this is a guy here that miraculously survives what should have been his death, and, and he's saying great things, and and he's doing great things, and 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 he's one of the, he's one of our ten world leaders, and he seems to be care about the average guy, and, and all these things. Like I said, all this is being done, gain influence, gain influence, gain influence. The more influence you gain, the more power you can exert over people. Okay, so that's what I think. This too, the deadly wound, wound to death. Will he blame God's people for this, or or the people that are serving the Lord? During the tribulation period, would he probably, probably? I mean, it begs to differ. Uh, you know, I, I, as I said last night, stuff like this on Facebook, uh, Bibles, commentaries, uh, cassette tapes here in my office. If, it, if you don't think for one minute when the rapture of the church takes place that Satan's not going to have people make sure all that stuff is destroyed, you're crazy. I mean, it, it, this will be taken down faster than you could turn your head when the rapture of the church takes place. Satan will wipe everything off the internet as to do with God or Jesus Christ. I promise you that. Anything about the Bible that's on there, it's going to be gone. I wish people would understand that. I mean, you've already seen it can happen, and it can happen very rapidly and very quickly. So, the Antichrist here, wounded, he survives his wound. He had influence before, his influence is growing. Okay? Verse 4. 
and they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. Wow. Okay. And I know this, you think to yourself, how can a world worship the devil and knowingly do that? I repeat once again, the the Christian or the uh, the Holy Spirit of God has really pulled back during this time. I'll be honest with you, and I'm, I've used this uh, example before. The Holy Spirit of God is like a dam that's holding the flood waters of evil from rushing over this world. That dam is going to be removed, and that rush of evil is going to come in. Okay, there is nothing that you can put past man. Go back to the days of Noah. As Jesus said, as it were, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man, as it were in the days of Noah. God said everywhere he looked, he's, every imagine of man's heart was evil. Violence everywhere. Evil and violence. Evil and violence. That's what God the Father saw. Is that not what we're seeing today? Evil and violence. I mean, you flip the TV on. You can't flip the TV on five minutes and not see looting, murder, uh, fornication, sorceries, or, you know, sorceries are, oh, there's many ways to, to God and you know, Jesus Christ ain't the only way. That's all sorceries. Okay? It's all there. And five minutes on TV, you can see it all. Okay? And it's people being saturated with that stuff. Now the Holy Spirit of God is gone. The church is, is for all intents and purposes, gone. The Bible says that they're not only, you know, after this traumatic event, that the Antichrist survives, they'll worship the dragon which gave power to the beast. The devil will get what he's always wanted. And that's worship. Okay, he's wanted that forever, and he's going to get it during the tribulation period. People will actively worship him. Okay, and I know you know you've got satanic worshippers today. I know Noah and some of these other guys in their commentaries point out that you've got some of that going on today. Okay, but they're actually going to actively worship him. They're going to say you know, and the, once again, remember the devil is a deceiver. They may think they're worshiping somebody who has their best interest at heart, but the devil does not. But they're going to worship him. On, on furthermore, they said they worship the dragon which gave power to the beast, and they worship the beast saying. So not just the the devil, but now the Antichrist. You know, they, they want the Antichrist. We want you. Okay? It says, who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him? I mean, his influence will be at such a level that the other regions or nations of the world, are you going to make war with a guy who has that much influence? You're not going to be successful. Once again, his influence will grow hand in hand with his economic might. I mean, if he doesn't like you, you don't have to nuke you. You just shut the food supply off or shut off your money or make your currency of no value. All right. I mean, there's many ways to conquer in this world society today. If you understand what you're doing and how to do things, you don't have to have armies to conquer. You need to have armies for, you know, to protect yourself. But you can conquer with money, monetary, economic. It's not hard to do now, thanks to the Internet and so forth. I mean, why do you think the United States looks at China as their cheapest threat? It ain't militarily. I mean, militarily. No, that's, that's not it. They have a strong military, and I'm not knocking that, but that's not what it is. It's cybersecurity. You'll hear that more than you will military might, or it's money, economic security, or economic might. You're going to hear that more than your military might. Right now, it's cybersecurity one, economic two, military three, as far as the Chinese threat. Same thing goes with the Soviet Union you know, or Russia, you know. Russia, their money is not very strong. Their currency is not strong right now. They're hoping to gain some strength in their currency thanks to America's uh, energy policy, okay? So they're hoping to gain some strength there. Next off, going back to what we're saying, economic might, you know, next thing that you got to look at too is their military might. Their military has not gone anywhere. It's still formidable. But if I can gain things economically, and, and also money-wise and so forth, and gain influence that way, I can get some power in this world. And that's what the, the Bible is telling you here is, who is able to make war with him? Armies must be fed and maintained. 
Okay? And the Antichrist has the means to do that. But at the same time, affect how other nations do that. All right? He says, who is like unto the beast? I mean, this guy almost got killed and he lived, miraculously lived. Who is like him? Once again, his influence is growing at a very rapid pace. You got to keep in mind, the tribulation period only lasts seven years. Okay? So seven years is not very long. It's going to move very rapidly. So the Antichrist very rapidly is gaining a ton of influence. Okay? Right off the bat. He goes on there and says, And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. He's going to get by with it. Okay? You're already being set up for that here in America. To speak lies and, and, and things and, and uh, you know, as a born again Christian, I don't buy it. But I tell you what, there's a lot of people out there that do. I, I mean, I I sit back when I was in high school and even in college, we were taught, you know, capitalism, socialism, and communism. All right, and they've not changed. They're still the same type of economic structures 40 years ago that they are today. Yet you've got kids in college and you've got congressmen and senators in the United States who think socialism is a great thing. And people believe that. I, I, you know, just it blows my mind. I, I cannot, you know, in the 1980s, that was unheard of. In the 1990s, unheard of. In 2021, it's a thing. And they're getting by with it. Our news media, by and large, other than maybe one or two of them, will not challenge them on that. They're getting by with it. I hope you're realizing this. They're getting by with it. You know, even on TV today, getting by with saying there is no God. They've been doing that for years. Secularism, as I preached this past Sunday morning, that secularism thing has failed miserably. Our children has failed them. Okay, look at the home today. The home structure itself. Eight in ten black children are born out of wedlock. Six in ten White children are born out of wedlock. The other cultures, whether it be red, yellow, or brown, are rapidly approaching the six and a ten and are passing that. In other words, if things continue on that trend, by the year 2030, predominantly, I'm, when I say predominant, I'm talking 85, 90% of kids in general, regardless of their race, will be born out of wedlock. Secularism has failed miserably. We're not teaching our kids moral equivalency. You can't do it without the word of God. That's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 9 and verse 21, that's why fornication is thrown in there. The utter, complete breakdown of the home. You're seeing it. In my church, I see it. Okay? In my community, I see it. You're seeing that breakdown happening. My church sees it. You can ask anybody at Tennessee South. They'll tell you, yeah, we're seeing it. We're seeing it happen. Church up the, or up the street will tell you that. Anybody around here, it's happening. Okay? So those things are taking place. But nobody is saying anything about it. Nobody's challenging that. Nobody's speaking the truth. If you get up and you say what I just said, they will shout you down or they won't report it. They won't. You do right along with police officers right now. You want to know why? In some neighborhoods, white or black, now unfortunately, predominantly black, why that they're more on their guard than they are in other neighborhoods? Lack of fathers. Lack of fathers. Folks, I was told that back in the 80s. By my own uncle, who was a police officer in Prince George County. That's outside of Washington, D.C. He says, the reason why that neighborhood is rough is not the color of the people's skins. It's the fact there's no daddies or fathers in there to bust some rear ends. Therefore, as an officer, I have to be more on guard in that neighborhood and have my eyes a bit more wide open than I would in another neighborhood where I know there's fathers beating some hind ends or keeping kids in line, if you will. Okay? That, that, 
There it is right there. And once again, giving him a mouth to speak great things and blasphemies. We've been conditioned to not hear the truth. We've been conditioned to ignore the truth. And the Antichrist has had this whole thing. The devil is going to hand him this thing on a silver platter. And he's going to stand up and say great things and blasphemies. And he's going to get by with it. The, if you think the media adores people today, you ain't seen nothing yet. They're going to treat the Antichrist like he's just, oh, he's magnificent. And all along, he's the devil. Okay? that's you're being, The world is being conditioned for this. Okay? It's, it's happening right now. You're seeing it happen in our nation and around the world. He's going to get by with it. Okay? Speaking great things and blasphemies. And power is given him to continue 40 and two months. That's three and a half years. Okay? He's going to gain his power. And he's going to get by with it. All right? And you're seeing the conditioning happening. Things are being laid out for the Antichrist to arrive on the scene. It has been going on for probably about 40 years now. And here over the last two to four years has really begun to gain some steam. Okay? Now, like I said, you've got all kinds of people in the past uh, you look at somebody like, uh, of course, you got Judas, and then you got Antichrist Epiphanes. Uh, you look at somebody like Adolf Hitler. You look at some of these other people and, and men of the past, uh, Benito Mussolini, who was actually in Italy. All right, when Italian was part of the Ax, uh, Italy was part of the Axis powers that contributed to World War II, which is where the Roman Catholic Church is housed. All right, so you've got that to keep in mind. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of forerunners, a lot of things, and here's the thing, and I, and I say this often. God always gives warning shots, okay, to get your attention, all right? He will show you these things can and will happen. In other words, you're going to get the warning before the hammer falls. And I believe right now in our world today, we're getting huge warnings, and people are ignoring them by and large. That, 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 that's the thing that's scary. People by and large are ignoring God's warnings about what's getting ready to happen. I, I mean, that's why I keep saying it, every day that I wake up and the rapture of the church is not taking place is an utter surprise to me. I'm surprised that God's not called his church home. Every day I get up, every hour of every day, I'm surprised we ain't been called out of here. And I know you think to yourself, well, the Antichrist, let me tell you something. The Antichrist could come on the scene, snap a finger. This thing is already laid out for him. Uh, the lying, the deceiving, the, the mistruths, the blasphemies, it's all laid out for him. You take the church out of here that fast, he can gain power. And think about it. The, the rapture of the church could be the thing that causes the world to go into regions and borders completely collapse. In other words, borders no longer recognized, but it's just going to be more like regions. European, Baltic, uh, India, Asiatic, Middle Eastern, uh, North America, South America. Australia, the rapture of the church could cause that, okay? You have a lot of people that leave, and here's the thing. There's actually a movie, a Marvel movie called Avengers Endgame, okay? Where half, you know, the, the guy that was the bad guy snapped his fingers and half of, uh, of all life in the universe disappeared, okay? Once again, people are being conditioned for these things to happen. I mean, going back to the Avengers Endgame movie, it was one of the top grossing films. Okay? People are being conditioned for these things that the Bible talks about to happen. I can't stress that enough. And the stage is set for the Antichrist. All this to is period. Now, I always get asked this question. How do you think the Antichrist is today? I had somebody asked me that here the other day. Uh, Preacher, where do you think the Antichrist is, or who he is, and first of all, I have no idea who he is. I don't know. I don't see anybody on the world stage right now. However, that could change. I mean, if the devil gives the power, he could give the power to any number of world leaders, and they could end up being that person, okay? Uh, it is possible he could be a Jew. Uh, I can't verify or say not. The similarities with Judas would point to that. If you will, son of perdition, Judas, of course, was a Jew. So the similarities would point to that. That is possible. 
as far as his age today, uh, he could be anywhere between uh, 11 years old or 30 years old, ready to take power. Now, I, I tend to think he's more on the line of, because uh, I think the rapture of the church is something that every day that passes, it shocks me it's not happened. So you kind of see that I think the Antichrist is at that age where he could very quickly gain power. Uh, so he has to be, of course, a lot older than 11, uh, probably in his 20s. Very possible. And he could be out there. Uh, you know, he could be willing to make the deal with the devil to, to take this thing and, and go with it. And that could happen. And, you know, when the rapture of the church takes place, that very well could take place. Okay. Uh, the most important thing you can do or anybody can do right now is make sure you're saved. I say that over and over again. Make sure you're saved. Make sure you are prepared. Okay. Uh, because, like we said, the Antichrist is about gaining influence and power. That's what it's about. And you look past at past uh, leaders, world leaders, uh, you know, people uh, of the past. That's where they were about influence and power. OK. And the Antichrist has those things in place to gain that at a very rapid pace. All right. God bless you for being with us today. And uh, we'll pick up with some more about him next week in, in Revelation chapter 13. Appreciate you joining us. Uh, don't forget service Sunday morning. I do want to encourage you once again. Uh, try not to miss Sunday morning service if you can, either on Facebook or in person. Uh, we've got uh, some special things planned, so I do be praying about that, okay? Let's close out and go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, as always, we thank you so much for what you do and continue to do for us each and every day. It's just fascinating to study your word, and then we look around us and we see all these things put in place. Uh, Lord, we are very, very aware that the rapture of the church could take place right now, and that the ushering in of the tribulation period could happen at a moment's notice. And all these things could be laid in, in perfect position for the Antichrist to take control. Uh, Father, I pray that anybody that watches this, that they make sure they're saved on their way to heaven. Make sure they know Jesus Christ as their Savior. They don't want to wait till after it's over with. Because being able to watch things like this, Lord, and, and I'm a firm believer. I believe you're the one that's behind this and telling me this. That things on the internet, books and so forth are just not going to be readily available. When the tribulation period starts, that the devil is going to make sure all of that is taken care or taken down or completely erased or destroyed. And Father, I pray that people realize now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. Know Christ as your Savior today. And Father, I pray now you go with us throughout the furnace of our day. Watch over, protect us, keep us in your care. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You enjoy the rest of your day.